So this is a C64 that has been totally broken by a bad power supply, uh, sending too much voltage into this poor old machine, burning everything in its way I think almost. <laughs> These are, I'm actually running it now, uh, I can't have a few so I just use this wire and uh, the RAM chips are boiling hot, I'm not joking, it's almost too hot to touch. So this is what happened and uh, you guys should really look out for uh, this problem that is a ticking bomb in these old uh, power supplies for the C64. Now this is a good um, example of where to use an oscilloscope, it's a really powerful tool in uh, pinpointing the um, faulty chips or uh, data bus that is locked by a chip and we can see that we have the clock signal to the CPU here it's a nice 1 megahertz signal and uh, just to be oh this is the data bus and uh, I don't know what that was this is the RAM chips the gray ones here we need to replace all eight of them and uh, put sockets in and uh, swap for new chips. I'm almost certain that all of them are, you know, gone. Just to have some fun here, we can check the logic levels here. So I replaced all the RAMs because the chips were bad and uh, I made my own sockets because I didn't have the correct um, pin count. Ah, it works, who cares. This is where the oscilloscope comes in as a valuable tool in um, trying to understand what's wrong with the machine. Um, in this case I'm using uh, one C64 that is working perfectly. To compare the different um, machines, I just probe 
the working one on a pin of my own choice and then the corresponding pin on the machine that is not working and I can see okay it's okay or it's bad and why is it bad what else is involved here I just look at the um, schematic and I can see well, this chip is um, also on the same data bus as this chip and I can sort of draw my own conclusion there and um, we have the right logic levels on the RAM now so what I'm struggling with here is either it's the, um, something's wrong with the PLA but I don't think so or something's wrong with the CPU so I'm thinking about removing the CPU and put a socket in and um, swap it for a new one and see if that's uh, that's the thing that's uh, preventing the machine from booting up. So, let's continue. So I changed the CPU and uh, as I told you the RAM is uh, also swapped and um, we actually get something on the screen now. It's, um, it's not a blue screen, it's not a game, it's nothing that is really useful but anyway look, something's happening here and uh, to me that's really good. And uh, the trick is to not uh, lose tempo here. Just continue and uh, push, 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 push until the machine is blue and happy again. Now I also changed the basic ROM here and I put a socket in, uh, in the place here so we don't need to do this again when this happens again because these old chips have a tendency to fail. It can easily be replaced with newer EEPROMs as you can see on the right here with a special adapter socket. And uh, I actually have a video that I posted a couple of days ago about EEPROM. Check it out. It's a very, very fast explanation of the EEPROM. Also, I found some weird uh, logic levels on U15, so I just put a socket in and swapped the chip. And uh, lo and behold, beneath the motherboard, there was a broken trace <laughs> that I totally missed. So this solved the final piece of the puzzle so um, we have a happy machine and uh, she's blue and thank you for watching